Hello everybody, good afternoon from Liverpool and today I got something really special for you. I just saw like a random ad <laughs> on the subway here. Apparently they're doing the tunnels, tours here on the Mersey. As you might know, uh, the Liverpool area is connected over across the Wirral on that side with two underwater tunnels and the subway tunnel of course for the train. And one of the tunnels, which is the, the oldest, called the Queensway Tunnel. Though it's one of the oldest tunnels, it was built back in the 1930s. I think it actually was the longest tunnel underwater built at that time. And I was really happy and to hear that they're actually doing tours of these tunnels. So immediately, yeah, on my day off today, I booked a, a tour for that tunnel. So let's see where it goes. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, I was instructed to come here to this building. This is the George Dock building. And what I read on the internet, <laughs> this is actually one of the ventilation towers. That's why it's so tall. It actually pushes air into the tunnel for the ventilation. So I'm guessing they had to build it in a certain style <laughs> to fit here with the three graces of Liverpool. So, you know, they couldn't just build like a giant chimney. <laughs> they had to do something about it. So, it's really good. Pretty good, actually. So, come on. Let's go see how is this tunnel for all you infrastructure enthusiasts. Should be good, yeah. I'm really, I'm actually quite excited to go see this. <laughs> because really, yeah, it might be like almost evening now. So they're doing the tours at 5 p.m. for some reason. But still okay, yeah, still nice. It was a really nice sunny day today in Liverpool. So come on. Oh, there you go, they actually have a... <laughs> they have an ad here, if anybody's interested. Just book your, your tour at that website there, or call that number. So come on. So they made the decision seven years ago that the police control room, which used to be based at the Wallasey Tunnel, you know the, those of us familiar with the Wallasey Tunnel, you know the structure above the tunnel yeah. rooms, used to be the tunnel. George's Dock and North John Street on the Liverpool side of the river, and Woodside and Sydney Street on the Birkenhead side of the river, and the two small event stations which service the branch tunnels, the Liverpool branch tunnel, and the Birkenhead Dock branch tunnel are there just down below. Now, only five of our vent stations are currently in operation because our branch tunnel, which services the Birkenhead docks, is now closed and has been closed since the mid-60s, so there's no need to ventilate that part of the tunnel. So this is a hardwired system, or it was a hardwired system. Anybody who worked in the offices in this building, if you wanted an outside line, or if you dialed into this building, they were the ones who took all the calls. 
and this is an early sort of uh, switchboard system. Uh, this here is in the tunnel. Uh, there's 90 fireboxes in the tunnel. You're never more than 25 yards from a firebox. Uh, so if you crisscross it across the tunnel, that's how it's designed. You're never more than 25 yards from a firebox. So if you break down in the tunnel, each firebox has got an emergency phone. You pick the emergency phone, and this light would illuminate on here. Perhaps the, the road deck in the Queensway tunnel sits halfway, basically bisects the tunnel in half. So that, that space you see above your head as you drive through the tunnel is replicated below. It's a huge tunnel. Now that's contrasted to the Kingsway tunnel. If I was stood under the Kingsway tunnel, there'd probably be a couple of feet above my head. The, the road deck sits sort of around three quarter level on, on that. Now the reason why the road deck sits halfway across was because the original plans for the Queensway tunnel was to have a, a road tunnel and also a double decker tram system running below. Uh, so why didn't we have, why, why haven't we got a tram system running below? So at, the, at that time before the tunnel was open, the main ways to cross the river was either by ferry or by rail. We used to have our uh, rail tunnel which was opened in 1888 was it called? 1886. Uh, and they put an objection in basically. They put an objection in, the ferry companies put an objection in and the rails put an objection in. They said you've got to put us out of business. Uh, and it got upheld, the objection got upheld. So the, 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 the sort of tunnel uh, board was left with a dilemma. Do we go back to the drawing board and re-engineer our tunnel? Sort of like... <laughs> Thank you. It's still working. Oh, that's good. <laughs> good piece of technology. Nice British engineering right there. We're in the tunnel now? No, no, no. Oh, okay, because I saw the bricks here. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got a long way to go again. <laughs> oh, oh, I should be. <laughs> I wouldn't be working here if I wasn't. Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. This is what we call our morning fresh air. 
George's Dock building, we've now just come out of George's Dock building and we've now just walked underneath Brunswick Street. So we're in this first archway here, which is slightly hidden by the old overhead railway. Okay? So remember before what I said to you, George's Dock, George's Dock building and the three graces are all sat in the dock. And what happened was, put two bridge structures across. The reason for that is when the people used to come across on the Mersey Ferry, instead of walking all the way around this dock and into the centre of Liverpool, just to make it more accessible to people, off the ferry, across the bridges and into the city centre. Okay. This photograph was taken in, in 1907 on the completion of the Port of Liverpool building. It was taken from the vantage point of St Nick's Church, just the other side of the Strand Road there. Okay. Rival buildings come along next, 1911, Cunard buildings in the middle, 1916, and the fourth Grace, George's Dock building, everyone forgets about us, <laughs> 1934. <laughs> this structure here, the old overhead railway, anyone know? Went up in what year? Yeah, 1893. Come down in what year? 60s. 57, he was listed. He was listed. The closing 56 came down. It was one of the earliest. It was the first. It was the first elevated electric railway in the world. It was the first elevated railway to have escalators. It was the first electric railway to have an automatic signal in the system. So when a driver went through a red signal, it had an automatic system in place to stop the train. Chicago, nice. New York, they based theirs on ours. Okay. <laughs> Possibly would have been a fantastic tourist attraction now, but it, it needed a lot of money spent. Yeah. Yeah. They should have lifted on there. Yeah. <laughs> they should have lifted on. by hand, pickaxes, shovels, small explosives, pneumatic drills, a lot of sweat and hard work. Uh, a lot of shouting! Yeah, a lot of shouting. <laughs> uh, health and safety was pretty minimal. We cracked, we had probably got more health and safety on us now than those fellas ever did. Cloth caps, cigarettes in the corner of the house. <laughs> uh, 1,700 men were employed. At the height of construction, 1,700 men were involved in the, in the construction of the tunnel and they were employed for 364 days a year. They were given one day off a year, which was Christmas Day, unpaid. Mm. When they met in the middle, the two mayors, they had a ceremonial breakthrough and the pickaxe is in, in our museum, you may have seen it there. That was the pickaxe which, which did the breakthrough. The two mayors from Birkenhead and Liverpool had a ceremonial shake hands in the middle and then that's the pump kicking in, by the way. And then they went off to the town hall for a big slap of dinner. He sent the workers home, the workers all got half a day off, unpaid. <laughs> tough, tough conditions. It was a great scheme though, because you, what you've got to remember is, at that time it was the Great Depression, on, on post First World War, and a lot of men needed work, and this provided employment to a lot of men. Uh, 1.2 million tonnes of rock was excavated from the tunnel, 
you know, does anyone know where that rock ended up? You know? Okay. Stone Quarry, well done, that's where on the, on the, 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 the Whittle side it went to Stone Quarry and on the Liverpool side it went to two sites, mainly Otterspool Promenade. It was used to construct Otterspool Promenade. It's like a beauty spot, a local beauty spot in Liverpool now on the banks of the river and also I don't people call it up it used to, some of it was used to fill in one of the docks in the dingle as well, I believe. So, uh, this area that we're in now, until we got our safety refuges, this was one of our, but still is, an emergency exit from the tunnel. But it was also uh, a fire refuge as well. You see the, on, the, on the ceiling there, you'll see some bumps. It used to be a fire cave that used to go on there. The people were expected to evacuate from the tunnel, come into this tube, sit on benches which were along here, to get put out. I think that was never going to happen. Yeah. 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 Now, does anyone remember a serious incident in the Mont Blanc Tunnel in 1999? We had a major fire in the Mont Blanc Tunnel in 1999. It resulted in the loss of life. The plane was now from under the river section. And as you go round to round, round the, the bend to your left, that's where the safety refuges are, like John just said, all underneath the river section of the tunnel. fresh air coming back from the bacon head side. Okay? What we're going to do now, we're going to walk down and take you into Central Avenue, into Refuge G. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now what's what's happened is obviously when they built this tunnel they only give it a hundred years shelf life okay 88 years of age now so what's happened is the way we uh, maintain it we don't allow heavy goods vehicles through here we haven't let heavy goods through here since the early 90s um, the engineers possibly reckon that we can get uh, a good few more years out of this tunnel out of this road deck Take a seat. Take a seat. Oh, this is 
Eu lembro desse point em mim. Um milhão de praxis. Couple of tables. Não te faço de um caçado. É. Não deu dia. Não, não me parece. Alrighty guys, I really hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. <laughs> it was really awesome, really, it was awesome. <laughs> the amount of stuff you learn about the tunnel and Liverpool in general, the history is are connected of course. It's really nice and these, you know, these people really know what they're saying and they know what they're doing. So yeah, you know, for 1930s the, to build the longest underwater tunnel in the world <laughs> and remain so for the 14 years. <laughs> That was great, really, that was great. And, you know, basically, like you heard, the other conditions were the, in which the staff worked 364 days a year, only one day for Christmas off, and they, even that one was unpaid. That's rough, that's gonna be rough. So, yeah, really nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed, like, like I said, and if you did, click a like on the video and subscribe for more good stuff for the future and I'll see you around. Cheers guys!